So the trade line just finished roughly three hours ago, and this is one of the more exciting trade deadlines in NFL history, just because teams are now wheeling and dealing now because you really need to have that talent there. When it comes to sports like baseball and basketball, you have to be really talented to be even relevant in those leagues. NFL is moving into that direction. So when it comes to it all, a lot of teams, they're going to be very aggressive at this point in time. And there's a lot of juicy stuff in here with the trade. So the first one I want to talk about is the one with the Denver Broncos trading away Demarius Thomas. Now, Demarius Thomas was, you know, he was a good, productive player for them. But he is a little bit of a sally. He's one of these guys where I just look at him and he's like, this guy's just such a dink. This guy really can't take a hit. And a lot of times with wide receivers, especially outside wide receivers, that's one of the big concerns right there is because they're just not that physical of that. Sure, Demarius Thomas is very physically gifted, but he doesn't really play with that kind of edge or attitude. Like He will drop the pass when he gets hit a little bit. Cam Chancer kind of made him look like a completely different human being. And he kind of went downhill from that point after that Super Bowl um, where they got absolutely obliterated by the Seahawks. Now, when it comes to Thomas, though, the dude's still got some talent. He's not Des Bryant when it comes to his questions whether or not his talent has degraded and all that. He's probably a little bit less athletic, but, you know, he could still play. And with the Houston Texans lining up, up as the second um, um, target to Deshaun uh, Watson would be a good um, idea right there because he doesn't have to deal with that responsibility. And Demaris Thomas, even though he can be a dink at times, he does come through in the clutch and all that. That Obviously, that great highlight reel with uh, Tim Tebow, that one pass against in the wild card game against the Steelers. He had a nice catch against the, uh, against the Rams and honestly kept them alive during that game. Uh, the Broncos almost beat them. And I just thought to myself that Demaris Thomas can be clutch, but there's a lot of times where he can drop a pass and really hurt you with those big moments when you really need to do stuff, and he just kind of pussies out. But this should be a good uh, trade for the, for the uh, Houston Texans because obviously you need more weapons there. I might have said this in one of my previous videos that, that I thought the Texans were completely out of the playoff push because they went 0-3, and I think the probability of starting out 0-3 you have less than a 5% chance of making the playoffs. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. But right now, they're looking real good. Obviously, they have a little bit of momentum on the side, so being aggressive right here makes 100% sense. And they really didn't give up much for, the, for Demarius Thomas, so it's obviously good, and, and it makes sense because Thomas, he's a little bit up there in age, so he's 31 years old. This guy's no longer a spring chicken. He's far from a spring chicken. And... I just look at it and think to myself, this should be good. Now, when it comes to the Rams, they have acquired Dante Fowler Jr. Now, when it comes to Fowler Jr., very talented guy. He just has a lot of injuries, and he's a piece of shit. You just got to leave it at that. He's been suspended for the first game of the year, and he just does so many dinky things and all that. The guy can ball out. The guy can. And I think when it comes to the Rams, their entire defense has uh, Tlaib, Peters, Sue, and now Fowler. you got basically a bunch of punks on your defense, and that can work on your defensive side of the ball. You need some belligerent guys there. So, it, so to be honest, it makes sense. However, though, Dante Fowler Jr., I don't think he's obviously going to be a long-term solution. I highly doubt it. Um, usually these, these trades are just rentals, uh, respectively. And I just think when it comes to the offense and the defense, you're talking about two different types of um, personalities right there. And I think like a team like the offense could get really frustrated by the defense for not playing up to the standard that they uh, want them to. Because obviously the defense has been giving up a decent amount of points here and there. So I just put this all in perspective that I think the Rams are obviously have to really go all in right here. And to be honest... You know, Fowler Jr., I'm surprised the Jaguars gave up on him, but the Jaguars, they don't need to worry. Their D-line is freaking stacked. There's really nothing too, too wrong about their defense uh, talent-wise. Uh, the culture there is just complete shit. Uh, they just don't get their attitude together. They're, just, they're way too edgy. They're one less edgy guy away. So departing with Dante Fowler Jr., it's a good move. They're, it's a very livable move. And, heck, this might be one of those moves where they could definitely – move on from it um, very easily. Now, another thing is the 
Packers got away two players. They got away an, uh, an interesting uh, running back or slash wide receiver, Ty Montgomery, a.k.a. Um, the, the guy that they basically are putting all the blame on for losing against the Rams because uh, he fumbled it. And, you know, you had two minutes left with Aaron Rodgers on the other side of the ball or on the, <laughs> well, with the Packers, and he could have easily drove down the field and score right there. Ty Montgomery coughs it up, instantly trades him away. To be honest... I like that about that Packers. Just the parting with the guys. You kind of have to be kind of cold-hearted. The Packers' ego has been the downside of the Packers. And even a guy similar to Aaron Rodgers, who I, I give him some props for calling out some of his teammates for not having a great efforts on those plays. I give him some props. But, you know, his effort level is very questionable at times. And sure, I get it. He's Aaron Rodgers. He can kind of get away with it. But the Packers, you know, at one point, Green Bay was title town. And I think a lot of Packers fans look at it as if that they have the expectations to win it all. You know, going 10-6 and and uh, winning a playoff game and losing a playoff game ain't going to cut it in Green Bay. So, to put this all in perspective, I'm not saying they're a bad team at all. Expectations are high, and so they're, they're throwing a guy under the bus. And right now they're 3-3-1, three, three and one, I want to say. So, they're still in the hunt, of course, to, to the Green Bay Packers. But, you know, saying getting away of uh, Ty Montgomery was a statement right there. I remember they did a similar thing right after the failed onside kick against the Seattle Seahawks in the 2014-8 uh, NFC Conference game. Uh, basically, the tight end screwed up on the ball. He was supposed to go for the block. He tried to catch the onside kick instead. It was supposed to be, Jordy was supposed to be the kind of the um, guy to catch the ball, go down, and it should have been game over by that point. But... Tight end, screwed up right there. He was supposed to go for the block. Cut him instantly. They're doing the same thing right here. And not only that, that's not even the biggest trade that the Packers did today. They traded away one of their one of their own pupils that they developed up, who's been a real nice player in this league. Uh, it's Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Now, I know Pro Football Focus loves this guy. I'm not as huge as a fan, but this is a statement trade. Why would the Packers give up a defensive player similar to Clinton Dix, which they desperately need all the defensive talent in the world. And yet, when it comes to Clinton Dix, they just put a him away. And a lot of people be like, why? It's a statement right here. The Green Bay Packers are coming in here and being as if that, you know, we got to get rid of one of our big names right here to really make a move. And to be honest, when I look at it, you kind of do have to make moves similar to this. A lot of times where you get a big name, a guy that people kind of look around, sometimes locker room respects, and you just have to depart with the guy. I remember the New England Patriots did this uh, four years ago with uh, Logan Makins. Uh, obviously, he, he was with them for a very long time. Very well-respected guy in that locker room. Just traded him away. And you just got to make a statement to make your guys kind of wake up like that. And I think when it comes to that, that's not, honestly, not only a New England thing. I remember Seattle, like four years ago, roughly around the same time, they traded away Percy Harvin. Big name right there. You, you just got to make stuff where you just got to be like, hey, Wake the guy, like wake up. You're not at the same standard that you are. We're departing with guys right now, really making them so that you have your guys on their toes. Because the Packers are one of those teams that are just way too comfortable. And I think like a team where they got an aging Clay Matthews, who's not the Clay Matthews that he used to be. And you just see them like Aaron Rodgers on all these commercials. The Packers just have this overblown ego that they just need to settle down. And they really need to get their attitude together and all that. They've been changing some of their ways. Obviously, they cut a long-time favor in Jordy Nelson because he obviously, you know, he wasn't the same player they used to be. They went out there and signed Jimmy Graham. Very uncharacteristic of them. And when it comes to it all, I definitely think that the Packers are trending long-term in the right direction. In the short term, though, they still need to get their attitude together. I get it, Clay Matthews, you don't like the rule, but you're a fucking dumbass when you keep on trying to sack the quarterback in the same exact way two weeks in a row. I'm sorry, you're an idiot. You should get your act together. And there's another trade where it comes to the Lions where they trade away Golden Tate. Obviously, he's been on the trade deadline or the trading block since week one, obviously. That was when the report that the Detroit players weren't like didn't like how Matt Patricia was holding practices, saying it was too tough on them. Now, when it comes to Golden Tate, he's one of these, you know, he's a good wide receiver, but one thing that separates him from other wide receivers is he's one of those underneath baller kind of wide receivers, similar to a Stephon Diggs, similar to a Jarvis Landry. That's something that Golden Tate brings, and he has that edge and attitude. And now the Eagles 
have low-key one of the best wide receiving cores in the NFL. And a lot of people don't look at the Eagles as if they're one of those, you know, they don't really have a lot of big names right there when it comes to it. But at the same time, though, you're looking at Alshon Jeffrey, who did really well last year. And who obviously, he's been kind of beat up this year. But whenever he's on the field, he produces someone. He's going up against good players. You look at Golden Tate, obviously. He has a lot of attitude right there. And I really do like Nelson Aguilar. That guy is secretly baller. And I just think that they have a lot of wide receivers that are just committed to win. And not only that, they're talented guys. Obviously, Alshon Jeffrey is really good at the deep ball. Golden Tate obviously plays with that fire with them. Nelson Aguilar, I love him with yards after the catch. Eagles have a real underrated wide receiving core right there. And to be honest, all these teams that made the trades, they really haven't departed much. I think there was like a third-round pick at most. I believe that was for Dante Fowler Jr., fourth-round pick for Demarius Thomas and all of that. And I think that I kind of skipped over the fact that, that you know, the Redskins have gotten Clinton Dix. Redskins are one of those teams where they might not have had faced that great of competition. However, though, when it comes to their wins and all that, sure, they're still winning. I still think that they're going to make the playoffs. And with HaHa Clinton Dix, I think that they're trying to make it so they can walk in with that. Because their wide receiving core isn't spectacular. I'm not really that impressed with their offense, but, you know, low-key, that's a top-10 defense right there. And sure, HaHa Clinton Dix is just rental, but, you know, they can give they can give a team a problem in the playoffs because, obviously, defenses usually do better in the postseason than offenses do. I'll keep that in mind. And I, I think that they didn't really give up much. And also... The Redskins have all these draft picks, so they can definitely rebuild in the future. Obviously, Alex Smith is not their franchise quarterback. He's going to be here for a couple years and all of that. And when it comes to Ty Montgomery to the Ravens, I definitely think that Montgomery, that's actually a good trade for the Ravens, even though he did screw up. They just need another depth at running back, and obviously I don't think Ty Montgomery is going to have that big of a role where he can screw up in that position. And I remember six years ago when I was a retarded fellow, I remember the Ravens signed this guy named Jacoby Jones, and I thought, ugh, you know, they just came off of that big loss against New England with Billy Cundiff, where he just kicks the field goal up, and uh, he obviously, he, he completely whiff on a little on a chip shot, you can say, and I thought, damn, the Ravens, they're never going to win a Super Bowl, like, in a long time, and then obviously they win it next year, and one of the guys was Jacoby Jones, and I made the argument that, well, you know, Jacoby Jones was to do that fumble against them in the playoffs, so why would you bring in a guy that chokes like that? Well, guess what? The dude has, like, the longest kickoff return in a Super Bowl history, and he obviously made that clutch play against the Denver Broncos, so who knows? Maybe Ty Montgomery just knows how to turn it around. And that's it when it comes to the trade deadline. Now, some other stuff I want to talk about. I want to talk a little bit about how Kyle Loyaleta uh, potential future uh, franchise quarterback for the New York Giants. I doubt it now. He just got arrested for a traffic incident in New Jersey. He was in Weehawk in New Jersey. I'm like, this is so fucking stupid. Like, how dumb do you have to be where you just get, like, these traffic violations? Like, the New York Giants culture is complete shit. It's not the same under Coughlin. Sure, under Coughlin, they lack consistency, and that was because they didn't put enough pressure at the quarterback position or really put a lot of time to really put a lot of draft capital in that. But the real issue is this culture fucking sucks. Guys like having Odell Beckham Jr. as your best player trickles down to the locker room, to everyone else in the locker room. And that's why you have Sterling Shepard acting like a little bitch on the sideline, throwing his helmet down because he's doing bad. Like, these are just bad antics right here. Really bad antics. And, of course, Eli Manning, he can't carry anything right now because he sucks, so he can't really... He can't really, he doesn't really impact his fellow teammates or the young guys. They might not look at him and take him that seriously. Saquon Barkley, great individual, great character, very talented player, and a fantastic running back, which is obviously in a football sense is the most important thing. He's just a rookie. He can't, he's not going to control it in year one. So there's a big culture thing. That's why they trade away Damon Harrison, who's a real good run stuffer and all of that. But... You know, when it comes to Harrison, it's just he might have not had that winning attitude that they want. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants, you know, fire Pat Shermer after the season. I don't think he will be, but we can't rule it out. And then guys similar to Odell Beckham Jr., you ship his ass out of here somewhere. Send him to Cleveland. Just do something like that. Just just get rid of it. you got to do a culture reset when it comes to this. 
And the Cleveland Browns did something good. They fired Hugh Jackson, who I repeated and made a couple videos on. And I repeated about how much this guy fucking sucks in his job. About how retarded his offensive scheme is. How it just runs all these stupid, trickery-ass plays. And how him and Todd Haley were jarring at each other. And you know, Todd Haley actually came in and actually did a good job. But thank Christ that the fucking Browns didn't hire Todd Haley as a head coach. That white trash guy does not deserve to be a head coach. The guy cannot be. The guy had a fucking drinking incident in Pittsburgh. Like, what the hell are you doing in a bar after you lose a game? It, it's ridiculous. You shouldn't be there. Of course there's going to be Steelers fans, and of course there's going to be some idiot drunk Steelers fans that's going to walk up to you and be disappointed for how your team performed this uh, previous day. So... And now, so of course, he's not qualified to be a head coach. For an offensive coordinator, though, he's pretty good at his job. I'll give him that. But for their head coach, they hired, they promoted their defensive coordinator, Greg Williams, who's spot now. A lot of you are going to look at Greg Williams as some dirty defensive coordinator, which he is, but hey, NFL's a dirty game. Can't leave it at that. I mean, I would say the like all the NFL players, like, Close to all of them are all on some sort of performance enhancer and all that. They're just some more than others. And obviously there are players that purposely hurt each other. And when it comes to Greg Williams, this dude does bring that toughness, that attitude right there that can really bring it out. And, to, and one of the highlights under Hugh Jackson's uh, highlights under their 0-16 uh, season was Greg Williams actually got their defensive players to play. You know, a guy similar to Miles Garrett has producing a lot. I remember when they had Jason McCourney as their cornerback, pro football focus, loved them and all that. He actually produced pretty well. And, like, guys, the, the defense at least kind of played. They were ranked actually quite nice. They were actually in middle-of-the-pack kind of team right there. But obviously statistics don't tell everything. So Greg Williams, I'm not saying he's Buddy Ryan or anything, but, you know, He's a real good defensive coordinator, and now as him as a head coach, I think he would be real good. Obviously, he's just going to be interim, but I think the Browns for the rest of the season will probably maybe get to, you know, five or six wins, which is like, you know, that's like practically winning the Super Bowl for them. So I think for, for the most part, yeah, that's pretty good right there. And for the Browns, so, you know, you know, it's it's not bad to be a Browns fan right now. Well, it's it still kind of sucks, but, you know, let's leave it at that. But, guys, I've been talking for, like, a long ass fucking time. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Leave your comments down below. See you guys next time. Peace.